Number one says that Jada is planning a kayak trip. She finds an expression for time in hours that it takes her to paddle 10 kilometers upstream. In terms of S, which is the speed of the current in kilometers per hour. So this is the graph that Jada gets if she's allows if she allows S to take on any value between um, zero and seven point five. So remember that um, S is the speed of the current in kilometers per hour. So we don't want to go kind of past this um, vertical asymptote here, and also. Um, when we're looking at this, so we're looking at as we get closer and closer to this vertical asymptote, our time is getting bigger and bigger. So the closer we get to this, the time paddling is going to approach infinity. So we're certainly not going to be paddling for an infinite number of hours. That's ridiculous. Um, and the closer and closer you get to this, the higher and higher it's going. So if we take a look here, um, and you kind of look at this, okay, so this is at about four and a half, um, a speed of four and a half kilometers per hour. She's going to be paddling for 10 hours and 10 hours is a pretty long time paddling. So that's probably a pretty good, um, upper limit for our speed. So we're going to put S in here. So we want our speed to be above zero, okay? I mean, it could be zero. I guess it could equal zero. You could have still water. So between zero and say like 4.5. So then what is the approximate speed of the current if her trip takes six hours? So that's gonna be our um, Y value. So her, her trip is taking six hours. So let's follow that over to the graph. We see it hit the graph here. So then we're, we'll follow this down to our speed and that's gonna be close to four. So her speed is maybe like 3.8 kilometers per hour. Number two, a cylindrical can needs to have a volume of six cubic inches. A label is to go around the side of the can and the function S of R equals 12 divided by R gives the area of the label in square inches where R is the radius of the can. So as R gets closer and closer to zero, what does the behavior of the function tell you about this situation? So you could just start plugging in values of R. So if I do 12 divided by one, that's 12. And we want to get closer and closer to zero. So I want to get closer to zero than one. So I could put in 0.5. So 12 divided by a half is 24. Um, I could put in 12 divided by 0.25. So 12 divided by a fourth is 48. And so this is giving you that surface area. Um, you could plug in 12 divided by 1 tenth or 0 0.1, and that's going to be 120. So as these um, radiuses, okay, so as these radii get smaller and smaller or they get closer and closer to zero, the surface area is getting larger and larger, okay? So the, the smaller the radius, okay, the larger the surface area. Okay, so this kind of means like the skinnier the can. Okay, so if you've got this, okay, versus this, and they have to keep the same volume. Okay, so the smaller the radius, the larger the surface area. So this surface area of this label is getting bigger. Um, so as R gets larger and larger, what does the end behavior function tell you about the situation? So now if we take in, and let me just put a couple of 12s in here. So now if we take and do 12 divided by um, radii that are getting larger and larger, so let's just start with a radius of 10. So 12 divided by 10 is giving us 1.2, or 12 divided by 50 is giving us 0.24 or 12 divided by 100, if we had a radius of 100, would give us 0 
or 12 divided by 1,000 would give us 0 0.012. And again, this is surface area. So as your radius is getting bigger, your surface area is getting smaller or the label is getting smaller. So as this can's radius widens out, okay, this can, okay, that surface area is getting smaller and smaller because the can, you know, that volume, that can is getting shorter and shorter. So this kind of the amount of space for the label is getting smaller and smaller. Number three, what is the equation of the vertical asymptote for the graph of this ras rational function? So remember, a vertical asymptote happens when we have division by zero. So when we divide by zero. So this is when this denominator or this bottom equals zero. So we say x minus one equals zero. So you can add one to both sides. So the vertical asymptote is x equals one. Number four, a geometric sequence H starts at 16 and has a growth factor of 1.75. So it's gonna start at 16 growth factor of 1.75, sketch a graph of H showing the first five terms. So remember, it's going to start at 16. Then we're going to multiply each term times 1.75 to get the next term. So 16 um, times 1.75 will give us 28. And then times 1.75 again will give us 49. Times 1.75 again will give us about 85.75. Times 1.75 again will give us 150. And then remember, we're supposed to sketch a graph of this. Okay, so remember that um, if we kind of think of it as X and Y, X is going to be the term number. And then y is going to be the term. So it's that 16, 28, 49, 85.75, and then 150. So then we'll go ahead and graph this. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x. And then we have to get up to 150 um, on the y. So I'll just do this as um, 50, 100, 150. So I'll just count by 50s. And then halfway in between there would be 25s. And then we'll plot these. So at one, it was at 16. So a little bit more than halfway to 25. Two, it was at 28. So just over 25. Three, it was at 49. So almost to 50. Four, it was at 85.75. So kind of halfway between 75 and 100. And then at five, it was at 150. So you kind of see it um, growing at a curve there at an exponential function. Number five, um, is this the graph of g of x or h of x and explain how you know. So we see this negative x squared, and then we'll have it times x. So the lead term of g of x is negative x cubed. And then we have x squared times x for h of x. So this lead term is x cubed. So then it's thinking about if the leading term is negative or positive, which way does this graph go? So remember, if the leading term is negative, it starts up and goes down. So kind of the overall behavior is it's going down. And so this one is g of x. Number six, a six ounce cylindrical can of tomato paste needs to have a volume of 178 cubic meters. The can, um, the current can design uses a radius of 2.75 centimeters and a height of 7.5. Use graphing technology to find a cylindrical design that would have less surface area 
So each can uses less metal. So I'm not necessarily going to use um, graphing technology to talk about this, um, but if we think back to this problem, we said that if the radius gets smaller, the surface area gets larger. And if the radius gets larger, the surface area gets smaller. So I'm just going to kind of write that out. If the radius goes up, the surface area goes down. And if the radius goes down, the surface area goes up. So in this case, if we want less surface area, so we want the surface area to go down, all we need to do is make the radius go higher. So if we just picked a radius of like three centimeters, okay, this would mean that we would have less surface area. So this just said use graphing technology to find a design that would have less surface area. So if we have a radius of three centimeters, okay, so now we would also need to come up with the height. So we know that the volume is equal to area of the base, and in a cylinder that's a circle, so pi times the radius squared, and then times the height. We know the radius is 178, and now I just said if we use a radius that's bigger, um, the surface area will go down. So I'm going to use 3, so 3 squared is 9. So then we'll just solve um, for a height here. So we'll just take and um, divide both sides by 9. So 178 divided by 9 um, is 19.7 repeating. And then we'll also divide by pi. So once we divide by pi, we get a height of about 6.3 centimeters. So we would do a radius of three centimeters and a height of 6.3 centimeters. That's gonna give us um, the volume that we needed of 178. And it's also giving us a lower surface area if we were to actually calculate that. Number seven, the surface area in square units of a cylinder with a volume of 20 cubic units is a function of the radius in units where s of r equals this. What is the surface area of a cylinder with a volume of 20, okay, which is from this equation, when the radius is 4? So we're just trying to do s of 4 here. So we're just going to plug 4 into this function. So 2 times pi times 4 squared plus 40 divided by 4. And um, so 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 with a pi. And then 40 divided by 4 is 10. So that would be the exact answer in terms of pi we call that. Or um, you can plug this into your calculator, multiply in the pi, and you get about 119.3. And then this is surface area, so units squared when our radius is 4.